Hi, I'm Riley, and today my group is going to be going over finite sets, and specifically I will be covering Sperner's theorem. So the very first thing that we need to consider when trying to explore this theorem is a chain versus anti-chain. So by definition, a chain is a set of subsets that are linearly ordered by inclusion, whereas an anti-chain is a set of subsets that are pairwise incomparable. So words aren't as helpful as numbers in this case, so let's get straight into some examples. Um, so for a chain, it is a set, and within the set of the chain, there are many subsets. So one example of this would be the set, the empty set, one, one, two, three, where we see that uh, the empty set is a subset of one, which is a subset of one, two, three. So in other words, simplified, every set is a subset of the following set in a chain. Pretty simple. And then for an anti-chain, uh, we see the opposite of this, where we have two sets in this set, uh, one and two, three, where one is not a set of two, three. Therefore, the pairs are incomparable. Or in other words, there are no uh, sets which are a subset of another set in the anti-chain. So I'm going to reiterate that before we go on to our first statement, because I think it'll help with understanding. An anti-chain is a set of sets in which the sets are not subsets of one another. I'm gonna let that process for a minute and then we'll look at our first statement. Um, and statement one says, we are given the set N of one, two, blah, 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 N. And we call a family F of subsets of N an anti-chain if no set of F contains another set of the family F. So this is really wordy but essentially they are just defining what we know to be an anti-chain. So there are no subsets F that are going to be, or sorry, there are no sets F that are gonna be subsets in the family of F. That's fine, okay? So we're asked what the size of the largest anti-chain is in uh, N. So the way we're going to think about this is going to, uh, be from the view of the maximum binomial coefficient. Fun. Um, so what the maximum binomial coefficient tells us is that when for um, a family of subsets like FK, um, so a family of subsets of K sets, um, N choose K, when K is equal to N divided by two, is going to be the maximum if n is even, and when k is equal to n minus one over two or n plus one over two is going to be the maximum when n is odd. That's what this maximum binomial coefficient theorem is telling us. And um, and I have the Pascal's triangle here, so we can basically just say that this is cool with us. So for example, um, if n is even, then n divided by two is going to be the highest or is going to be the biggest number. So let n equal, uh, let n equal four. So if we go, if we're on a little Pascal's triangle here and we go down to four, we see um, that the four divided by two, the second term is going to be the largest in which that's going to be six. And um, that's the same, because this, okay, just a refresher of the Pascal's triangle, if this doesn't make sense to you, this is zero, one, two, three, four. So um, when something is even, let's take another one, let's do six down here six divided by two, the third term, if this is zero, one, two, three is going to be the maximum. And then for odd terms, when n is odd, let's take seven, um, n plus one and n minus one divided by two. So that's going to be eight divided by two, which is four, or six divided by two, which is three. So three or four, if we have zero, one, two, three, four, they're both, that's, I mean, 35 is maximum of this. So we know this to be true. And this is really important. So let's just like, you know, if you want to just this, just put that in there because this is very important for later on in the proof. So Sperner's theorem, what is this magical thing that we are talking about today? It, that just basically is a theorem that states that the size of the largest anti-chain of an N set is N choose N over two. Um, so let's get into it. Um, so to prove this theorem, I'm just gonna have the goal on the left-hand side the entire time, just to like know 
what we're just to you know keep on track see what we're thinking um so we're going to be thinking in terms of chains and you know more so chains of subsets so for example um like the first example that we had zero the the empty set is a subset of one this is a subset of one two three we're thinking about that just let's like use c for example, so the empty set would be equal to C0, it's subset C1, subset of C2, blah, 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 all the way up to N, uh, where we know that um, C is CI is going to be equal to I, um, which is going to be equal to zero. Uh, well, it's I is going to be equal to zero, one, two, three, all the way up to N. So we're basically, from this, we're trying to figure out how many um, Ns there are going, how many elements of N are going to be here. So from using this, letting i equal 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to n, we know that there's going to be n factorial elements. Uh, so let's continue. So we're going to let, in this case, we're going to let a be an element of f, and we're going to try and figure out how many uh, chains contain f, or a, sorry. And um, this also should be kind of intuitive. So how many sets are there? how many chains are there between the empty set and A? And um, we're going to find that if A contains K elements, then there is going to be um, K factorial N minus K uh, factorial such chains. So uh, this basically, this is important because that means that no chain is going to be in the same set. So for example, like you know, if this is like two and then two minus one, that two factorial, there is n one factorial, they're not going to um, be an issue for one another. So the next thing we're going to do, um, which is important for this, is to let mk be the number of k sets in f so that f is equal to uh, k up to n sets of mk, which is the last thing we have on this slide. And this is really important because this means that we can rewrite it like this. That says that all, if we add up all the sets from zero or from k uh, to n, we're going to have um, m k sets in which that number of sets is going to be k factorial n minus k factorial, which means that this number that we have right here can never exceed n factorial chains, which is what we want, because if it could exceed n factorial, it wouldn't make any sense. And that's like the first thing we did in this proof. Um, so I would just like to point out um, before we get too deep into this, that this should look pretty familiar to us because we know how binomial expansion works that I just want, you know, just throwing this in your heads right now that you should be looking out for, I mean, something like this because what else would we expect? Um, so then if, you know, let's continue. Uh, so from this, I guess I just gave the answer away because you can just um, throw the N in there. You can divide by the N so that you can have the, all the sets of NK divided by N choose K and which this is really important because once we get here and we set this up, we can now go in, okay, what do we know about this? If we're trying to find the maximum amount of uh, anti-chains, and we have this, this uh, binomial right here. What are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? We know Pascal's triangle. We know what needs to go in there. So the very next thing we're going to do is sub in uh, what we know for the maximum anti-chain being n choose n over two. So we're going to plug that in right here. Um, uh, and then we're going to say, okay, well, we know that n factorial is going to be the maximum. It can't exceed that. So we know it's going to be less than or equal to one. So then we can just uh, multiply it, or sorry, we can take it to the other side. And then we know that we've proven the theorem now. This is the trickiest part I thought for me personally, is that, I mean, there's a one, so we can multiply it, bring it to the other side so that we can have that, uh, that from zero to n, all the sets, all of the k sets uh, have the maximum at 
n shoes n over two. So if you want to find the maximum um, binomial coefficient for a uh, you know any any number of sets, it's going to be n choose n over two. So I hope that made sense, and I hope uh, you enjoyed the rest of our group's videos. And thank you.